The airport is closed. Pardon? The airport is closed. I have a plane to catch. It leaves in 20 minutes. Papers. Ticket. Passport. The airport is closed. How am I going to catch my plane? Listen, I know you're probably sick and tired of explaining why the airport is closed, but I happen not to know. When I bought this ticket, no one told me that the airport could be closed without warning. So could you go to the trouble of answering my questions? They're completely legitimate. There's a bomb alert at the airport, sir. All flights are delayed for the foreseeable future. When the airport has been cleared of explosive devices, you will then be able to enter. I will. Won't be much use then, will it? Christ! When will you... Of course, there's a bomb alert in the airport. Why? That must mean that someone's either flying in or flying out. Someone important enough to be attacked. Like um, a politician or a scientist. Are you a politician? No. A scientist? No. Strange. You're the only person here who looks anything like a politician. Or a scientist. Why? Because you haven't got any luggage. So what? No luggage means nothing bothers you. Either it's being delivered, or you don't need it at all because you're so caught up in your politics or your science that you don't think about anything else. Well, actually, I'm not thinking about anything else, but I'm not a politician or a scientist. Are you worth attacking? I have no idea. I mean, could they have planted the bombs in the airport because of you? What makes you think there are bombs planted in the airport? I'm guessing. Actually, it's, uh, it's what the soldier said. The soldier said that. It was mad. I never heard anything like that from him. I just know someone left some bags on the runway, and at the moment, the bomb disposal people are trying to find out what's inside. And while they're doing that, all the flights are cancelled and the airport is closed. And all because of some stupid bags? All because of some stupid bags? There could be anything in those bags. We could go up in smoke. And it's naive to suppose that bombs are planted in airports because of politicians and scientists. They're planted there for everyone. Everyone sitting here. Because when totally normal, innocent people are killed, it's even more shocking than when some famous person is. If the most ordinary people are killed, I mean, often and in large numbers, and not at war, but right in their homes and in airplanes and on their way to work, well then, everything in the country changes. And politicians with their pointless politics and scientists with all their science can go to hell. To hell, yes. Because no one and nothing can control a world in which ordinary people are killed that often and in such large numbers. Yeah. That's right. Why kill the ones with the guns? Because it's so simple to kill an idea. Assassinate the sense of things. No one gags them, do they? The meaning of life. The big idea. It's in people, it's in all of us. And even now, they're guarding the airport and not us. The innocent always suffer. That's right. The innocent always suffer. Although, one way or another, everyone's guilty of something. But still, that's no reason to start bombing everyone, is it? Oh, whatever gave you reason to think that something in those bags could blow up? We're not claiming anything. We're just discussing it. They're finding out. But in any case, it's already blown up. Yeah. That's right. Blown up. What? Where's the smoke? The splinters? The ruins. Where are they? It's all inside. Inside? 
Yeah. Insert all these people sitting here. And the ones who are stopping us going in. Those people standing in the cordon. They were torn away from something. From their own lives, whoever they were. Made to worry. Panic. Even if they pretend they're not scared, they are. I can see. In each of us here, something has been broken. We've been made to think about something completely different. And what can we even do about it, eh? And to think about the ones on the runway out there at the moment. They're risking their lives opening those bags. There are three suitcases, and in every single one of them, there could be an explosive. In every one of them? It's not ruled out. There'd be such a blast that even here would be covered in splinters. We seem to have all the answers. All the answers. All the answers? What's the time? What difference does it make? No one's going anywhere anyway. Where were you trying to get to? Does it matter? I was flying from A to B. Meeting. I was dropped off here this morning. My wife packed my bag, and she will collect me tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. And there are people waiting for me in three hours' time. But it looks like I'm not going to be there. You won't. No, you won't. I'm going to be late for everyone. Whatever shall I do? What indeed? If everything blows up, we won't be flying anywhere for a while until they mend everything. We won't be flying anywhere at all if that happens. If they get rid of the bombs, we won't be going anywhere for a while anyway. Really? It'll be two or three hours while they redo the timetable. After all, everything's been put back. But I have got to get there. Whatever it takes, I have to get there. You'll get there. In about six hours the earliest, if they defuse the bombs right now. This is madness. What sort of age do we live in? I don't feel safe anywhere now. Only at home. At home? Only at home now. You hold on to your convictions. What do you mean? I'm late. I'm not going to make it on time. And actually, I could have died. It's a good thing they discovered those bags on the runway in time. And actually, I've got no choice. I have to sit here and wait for all this madness to be over. I'm forced to take part in it all. Well, I do have a choice. Really? <laughs> yes. I'm going to go home and wait it out there till everything is back to normal. And then I'll come back and get my flight. You see, I've uh, no desire to stay here. This does not concern me. And quite frankly, I don't care what happens. I'll wait down at home. I'll be refunded for the delay. I'll get a new ticket. And I will make my flight eventually. I'll be late. But I'll make it. You're just trying to convince yourself. Do you think it will help? There's a bomb alert. The airport's closed. I'm going home. That's it. Right. I'm off. So are you really going home? There is no point in waiting around here. This pantomime will go on. For ages. For ages. <coughs> Goodbye. But you're coming back. Of course I am coming back. I will get my flight later. Whatever. Okay then. See you soon. See you soon. Yeah. As soon as all this madness is over, there's probably going to be another, you know? Something along the lines of us all being stuffed into one big plane, which will race around at the speed of sound, dropping us all off where we need to be. I don't get your stupid jokes. What do you mean by that? Why are you joking right now? So are they waiting for you? 
Who? There. Where you're going. If there's no one waiting for you, why don't you stay? It will be a surprise. See you then. emotional stuff suddenly. Some memory upsetting you? Why are you crying for no reason? I don't know. I feel bad. Confused. Like a used ashtray. <laughs> a used ashtray? I don't know. It's like when you have health for a very long time, you really think it's going to be special with that particular man. Or with Edmund, in fact. <laughs> you hang on, you fantasize, and then when it all happens, the second after, this emptiness suddenly descends on you. And now I feel the whole emptiness in the world. <laughs> must be something wrong with you. You can't go around being like that. I don't know. But the hardest thing is, is to get over these first few seconds and minutes. After that, when you start to learn it again, it gets easier. But then the emptiness again! <laughs> Hysterics of yours also have it, or did you put on this little show especially for me? For you. <laughs> it will all pass in a minute. How is that for you? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Could do it again. It. <laughs> oh God. It. Find another word, anything else. It. Are you trying to kill me? Late autumn. The rooks are flung. The trees are naked. The fields are bare. Only a strip left to be mown casts us suddenly into despair. As if Ears of corn, we're whispering together. We're miserable here in this raging weather. Stop it! The moment I've me ever since school, I say it in my head or out loud, and the time flies past. And I just think about those ears of corn, and not about whatever it is that's bothering me. Just those ears of corn. It gets better as it goes on. Because those ears of corn, they're sort of waiting for a peasant who hasn't ploughed the land or harvested them, right? So they're waiting. And they're calling him. And then there's an answer, right? There's a voice from above or something. It calls out to him. I mean, to those ears of corn. He doesn't reap or sow the field because he is so very sick. The hands that tended strips of land have dried to old stick and hang like whips. Let's stand up. Tying you up. Mm -hmm. What with? But well, I don't wear a belt. Oh, what with his belt? He doesn't wear one. Tying you up with your pair of tights. Tights? Yeah, go 
I know that. Oh, take some out of the cupboard. And I lie here like I'm unconscious. So I lie here like I'm unconscious. And you tie me up while st I'm still unconscious. And, uh, and I come around straight away. But it will be too late. And you will possess me completely. And I will submit helplessly. Well, the tight stay. No, they won't. Come on, and they're over there in the middle tower. Your husband wears long socks. Oh, they're long ones. Shall I tell you what these then? Mm, they could be dirty. He always throw them in with everything else without sighting them. With everything else? Mm. They're dirty. Mm. Oh, what a strange smell. Oh, I can bear it. Get on with it, won't you? You live in a pigsty. You keep an eye on your old wife. <coughs> This big is fine by me. Oh, that's strange. Your, your underwear smells like your husband's socks. Did he, he put them in with my underwear? No, no, no. They're in a different drawer, but they they smell the same. Give them your. That's odd. Are you sure you're in the same drawer? Yeah, sure. That's all your stuff, and that's all his. And those socks were down there, actually. Probably it's the cupboard making them smell. The cupboard? Yeah, the smell of wood. Wood. Put them back in and stop sniffing everything. For God's sake, get on with the business. Oh, that's not good. What's not good? Your cupboard's full. And? Well, if your husband comes home, I'll have nowhere to hide. He's not coming home. Not at all. He gets back tomorrow. Oh, the same. We should have arranged for this when he was definitely on the plane. Or after he arrived and wherever he was going to or something, I shouldn't have arrived at the plane. Because this one was ridiculous. Me sitting on the bench, waiting for him to walk out of the building and go off into the distance. I have fantasies too. About breaking in here and making love to you. See, I don't care about the stuff people normally care about. You know, usually when it's someone else's wife. You, you ask things like, did he give you a goodbye kiss? Did he hug you? But I don't care about all that stuff. Because every one of us does exactly what they want. And I feel down and empty straight after I come as well. And then I want to eat. And then I want to do it again. It's horribly ordinary somehow. Even the fact that you're someone else's wife and I'm tying you up. Shall I tie your legs? Yes. I don't want to think about all this. <laughs> I want to imagine that, yes, something untasted and deliciously interesting is lying in front of me all tied up and I'm about to violate it and nothing will happen to me as a result because, well, in theory, everything has been mutually agreed. And this stuff isn't in the small print. I know I'd be far happier if I really had the urge to tie someone up and get pleasure from it or to secretly sniff someone's underwear or socks or something and Get off on it so totally that I could come with a single thought that I was about to sniff something intimate, something not mine. I don't like that stuff. I can't get into it. And anyway, I've realised that every little bit of my body is separate from the other bit and lives its own life, not connected to the rest of my body. All of it is separate. And sometimes, right, one part of me terrorises another part. But at the moment, my mind is making fun of everything that should be turning me on. So I'm rubbing myself on you, but I'm not getting any pleasure from it because it's like I'm in a diving suit. And the fact that I'm hot, and I'll probably come in a minute. Oh, that's my memory keeping me going. But every time my mind commits a terrorist act, I get closer to forgetting everything. And then it'll go further and further. And then I'll become impotent. It'll go further and further. And then suddenly if I don't like the smell of someone's underwear or something, then that'll be it! There! That's it! That's it!
have gone uh, all over. <laughs> because of the tides. Shall I tie you? <sighs> because of your words. I don't know. They're like chains. Right. <coughs> Turns out you're worse than me. I just felt bad. And I want to spoil your mood with that. In fact, to you with that. But you are a nightmare. You're hopeless. You're <coughs> tiny. I wouldn't find a bite to eat. Great. I'm tiny. I wouldn't mind a bite. So I must have something to eat, that's for certain. After the second go, I don't feel so bad because I get up an appetite. And then suddenly I think, that was worth doing after all. It was worth it if I need to get up an appetite! But I must feed it though, because while it's still there, there's still hope. Christ! <laughs> the more time I spend with you, listen to all your words, the more I like my husband. So. It will get to the point where I fall in love with him again. I'm saving your marriage. Don't sign me. Is there anything to eat? In the kitchen, in the fridge. There are some salads. Red? White, brown? Brown? There is no brown. White? Baguette. Baguette? It's a stale. It's from the day before yesterday. We had guests the day before yesterday. We don't eat bread. Untie me. No, I'm not going to untie you. Can I eat in bed? No, you should eat at the table. But if you don't untie, you can eat in bed. Because no one's going to stop you eating in bed. I'll eat straight out of the bowl, alright? Aren't you going to untie me? No. <laughs> this one's more interesting. Violence would be more interesting. Couldn't have been him. Him, her, whatever. I'm out. I'm definitely out. <laughs> That's for sure. What are you going to do after finish eating? I'll have a sleep. What about me? Oh, you can do what you like. I'm not going to untie you yet. I'll have a sleep, rest a bit, and then uh, make love to you again. You've got it all worked out perfectly. Almost too perfectly. And you don't like it then? No. Excellent. Now it's for real. No more messing around. Is it turning you on yet? Not just yet. Wait then. What, what, what are you doing? Perhaps in a minute or in an hour I'll jump on top of you. Are you really going to have a sleep? I'll try. <laughs> she want me to gag you? No. Well, stop shouting then. Okay. <laughs> See? You're liking it already. Don't sleep wrong. I've got pins and needles in my hands. Guy, guy, horrible word that guy. You understood me, pins and needles in my hands. Your underwear stinks. 
My other hand doesn't stink. My hands are sore. Just don't complain. I'm not. You're the victim. I'm the rapist. It would be absurd if you started complaining to me. You should have started complaining to me first. It would be even more absurd. The rapist complained to the victim that her underwear stinks. You're really spoiling it for me. You're stopping me getting in the proper mood. I'll wake up just as you're falling asleep. We'll have a good time. You'll have a lovely good time. I'll screw you and untie you. Job 
as long as it says fashion for ethnic hoes, they get a load of these ones like your son-in-law and ask them to sing and dance all in their national style. The ones who've got the money, they get high on it, on all this ethic and invest in the ones like your son-in-law. It's just they've made the fashion. No one gets off on simple, understandable language or strict culture anymore. Druggies, druggies all around. They've got the money. These producers, network marketing managers, all working for drugs. My own pension goes on to pay for my mobile and food. And they're working to pay for drugs as well. Just wait and see this fashion for ethnic will pass. And your son-in-law will be back sweet in the yard or making scrap metal, which is after all what these fancy dressed singers should be doing. So if they took them out of work, I'd have to support them all, will I? No one will ask you, you'll be enslaved, sweetheart. Or they'll just drown you in the bath and take the fat for themselves. Oh, God! Are you serious? What am I going to do? Here you are. What's this? This is war, do you understand? It's time to move from preventative measures to ground attack. In this war, it's the first to make a move to the winner. One of these in his soup or tea every day. And in just six months, Dawn grants and his favourite brat will be one happy family. All that will remain of the sun law. I have been there, please. Look at these round pills. Is this poison? Lost his love! Of course it's poison. <laughs> Don't worry, you won't be found out. It's already been tried and tested by me. And your son in law is just a crook. My husband was way worse. So you helped him. Helped him. Or he'd have been around another 20 years preparing to meet his maker. But he was such a nice man. Nice! That nice man ruled my whole life. It's only the last year I started to feel like a real person. Feed him my own flat. All the kids sorted out, and no one bothered me. How many tablets? One. One. What about two? Would it be twice as fast? <laughs> if you were <try> two. <laughs> I'm telling you now. I won't be bringing you food parcels in prison. He'd have shift running in his veins instead of blood. And they'll work out it was you straight away. So you be patient. Let it take its time and no one will guess. Just one tablet a day, do you understand? What's up with you? With us? What do you mean? Why are you sitting here? What are you waiting for? I'm giving my grandson some fresh air. And I'm getting a bit of fresh air. What's wrong with that? But the whole day ahead. Well then. I'm doing out here is my husband, I can't do. 
and he's hardly going to ask me. Do I always sit here? My grandson's singing, I'll swing it over there. So what? Those bossy types. What's that on your forehead? What? A red dot, come here. Oh, I need, oh, I need a hanky book. He took it off with him. Well, I never took it for a right, all right, didn't he? Stop it, will you? Oh, it appears. Oh, it's back again. What's that then? I think it's one of them laser sights. Like a sniper's aiming at you. What for? To shoot you. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> Look, what's that your grandson's biting at us? Oh, that's just what his dad gave him. That's just a, a little toy that laser so wish. So it started already. That's how it starts with toys. Tell him to put it away. Tell him. Ah, uh, what's you up to, eh? Oh, don't be scared. It doesn't shoot. It just aims. Oh, it aims. And then it shoots. Put it away, dear. Put it away from us. Ah, uh, sit down and have a swing, love. Sit down and have a swing. He's not listening. Mm. Right, okay, I'll teach you. Didn't I tell you to put it away? Put it away. Sit down and have a swing. Or I'll take you home. Look what blood makes people do. Just in their blood and that's it. Nothing you can do, it doesn't matter how you bring them up, you need to poison the lot of them, every <laughs> single one of them. Go on! Bring it in the bit so you'll never play with it again! switch on all the gas. All of the taps. Hey, boys. Look where I snap. Lovely, ah, eh? Ah. Lovely. Whose hands are those? Look. Hands and feet are tied to the bed. And in the middle, nothing. You're a maniac. <laughs> are you collecting for an execution? <laughs> You're sick. I leave off you so bad, you'll do for a photo exhibition. I just rip your legs off, stick them in a the locker, and we'll call it legs in a locker. <laughs> what do you want from me? Why do you get at me the whole time? Oh, you pussy! Alright, that's enough. Let him get dressed and disappear. The moaning he makes, I can't stand it anymore. Boys, break it up, boys.
tired yet. Gotta find something to do with your hands. Hey! Hey! You fight with him today, and he might not pull you out of the rubble tomorrow! In the back. <gasps> Tragic accident. And all because of your stupidity! Sit down. Take any pics. Come on, I saw you. Snapping away. Show me. Come on. A woman. A woman. A man is a painter. You've got eagle eyes. How on earth can you tell red nail varnish from blood? When you have seen as much as I've seen, you'll be able to tell as well. Well, they take you all off. The airport. What's going on there? The usual. Suitcases on the runway. Did they explode? No. They were empty. Empty? Yeah. Someone left empty suitcases. Why would someone leave empty suitcases on a runway? Well, we were stuck there for three hours. Probing it all with the robot. Well, we had. Did the boys tell you? Yeah. Could have been an accident. Could have been bloody anything. Someone turned on the gas. Two people in the apartment. And a spark from the doorbell set it off. The doorbell? Yeah, the doorbell. Some kid, stupid fool. These two old ladies were chasing after him, trying to give him what for, for some reason or another. Anyway, he keeps going up and down the stairs, and he's pressing the doorbell, and he's hoping people come out and ask the old ladies what they've been up to. And he can escape and get out of trouble. Cunning. Yeah, cunning. He presses the doorbell and is blowing away. Probably scared they wanted to beat him up. Probably. Yeah. Well, they're alive. I'm not sure about the kid. Old cows. What the hell were they playing at? We question the old ladies and ask them, why did you terrorise? This kid so much. They's running around the block like that, and one of them said, We do that a lot, but nothing's ever blown up before. <laughs> I mean, honestly. And then the other one, she hasn't said anything. She just keeps writing down this bloke's name and then asking her for forgiveness. Writes his name and asks him to forgive her. Then, she turns to us, holds up the bit of paper, and moans. Anything can happen after something like that. That's right. Some people turn into beasts after an experience like that. What? Tell me something. Why do you keep taking photos of all of that stuff? Oh, I don't know. Wait for a laugh. And then maybe we can do a photo exhibition. You know, show them how wrong all this stuff is and maybe people won't do it in the future. <laughs> you are talking shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Someone will go, I get that. Because it is handy. No paying the vet to have him put down just that. <coughs> so, what I want to know is this if he hadn't heard about the dog, would he have fought it up for himself? Would he have even done the deed? So, you reckon? that once it happens, just let it go on. Bombs, murder, violence, a dog falling off a balcony. Just as long as we're kept shielded, we stay silent. We're the better for it. I'll tell you what I like. And it's really very simple. I reckon that unless you show this lot you mean business, they are going to fuck you over. Whenever I see this lot, they're always on your back. So why don't you start worrying about yourself first, then worry about other people. Hey! Hey! Now, I don't want to see any more arguments, okay? Relax.
those words. She was desperate. See, you sort out yourself first and then help other people. And everyone wanted to copy her. Everybody thought it was normal. There's your happy birthday. isn't working. We should tell someone. Joke. I was joking. <laughs> That's not very funny. <laughs> not funny. Actually, he's even more scared than me. That's why he's making so stupid jokes. Very stupid jokes. Look, <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. She's right. I'm very scared. I mean, just take it. Look at it, it's a thin partition wall and then out there, sky, it's, a, it's enough to make your head spin. And I wither away, wither, to distract myself and to stop myself even thinking about it because it sends you out of your mind easily. Perhaps you need a drink. Unfortunately, I don't drink. Well, I'd have one. You too. <laughs> Press it then. What? The call button! Oh, yes. It's strange. There should be people going up and down asking if we need anything. That's strange. Where are you flying to? Me? Yes. Where is the hostess? So where are you flying to then? Oh, hey, listen. The right-hand engine isn't working. It's on fire! I mean, We've been hit. There's no war. How can we be hit? <laughs> My. How come you seem to know everything? How long ago has it been since you boarded the plane? Half an hour? Half an hour. You know what could have happened in that time? The world could have turned upside down. And if that's how things are going, we'll land in a completely different world. If we land at all. Stop. Stop right there. Where is the air uh, hostess? When are we going to land? i got to get out. i got to go back! Calm down, calm down. How are you going to get out? 
Come on. Be patient. I gotta go. I, I. What? Come on, tell us. Exactly. Why don't we just start giving up all our past misdemeanors? Will that make you feel better? No. It's too late to get it all back now, isn't it? It's disgusting to feel sorry for doing things you can't undo. Because today you could have acted differently. You could have. But you acted as you did, and this now your present is what you made it yourself. That's right. When everything's fine and there are no upsets, no one wants to think about anything. You're in a right old mess. You're in a right old mess, do you understand? And you have been for a while. A long while. What made her do it? What was missing from her life? We lived well. We got on together. We loved one another. What more did you want? Don't. Be stupid. That's not what this is about. Take a look at yourself for a start. What's going on in your life? After all, something happens to you every day, doesn't it? Because every day, everyone is moving closer to the fate they deserve. What a mess we're in, deluding ourselves that somebody out there is going to kill us. Well, actually, it turns out we kill ourselves, don't we? Not all at once, of course but in slow motion like a film. Stop it! I don't want to hear any more of this. Where's the animals that we've got to put out the fire? We've got to save ourselves! Why is everybody sitting here? Why? You worked all this out a long time ago. What's the point in putting out the fire? What's the point in saving this plane? Put out the fire. But what's waiting for you when you land at home? at work. <clears throat> it's terrible. Terrible to feel vulnerable like this. But actually, you're the one who's to blame. Stop it! I can't do any more of this. You're insane. <laughs> I've heard all this before. I had it at the school. Read about it. Heard it from my papa. When I was little, when I was little, oh, God! Oh, 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 Yes, yes, thank you. 